Trump, tyranny, and transgenderism. What do they all have in common? Well, let me unpack it for you as kind of how I see things. It seemed at least last week that the indictment, the grand jury indictment on Trump wasn't going to happen. They realized the grand jury, Mr. Braggs, that he didn't have much of a case. And it seemed from all accounts that this was going to go away. However, yesterday they did the unthinkable, crossed the Rubicon, did something absolutely that's never been done by indicting a former president and actually somebody who is a current candidate. Those are the things of banana republics. That's what happens when one party weaponizes the apparatus of government to go after another party. That's really what's happened here. This isn't about Trump. And, you know, ultimately it boils down to a system and a system that's showing that it's under stress at best. And if not, it's collapsing. The reality is that one party should not be able to weaponize against their political rivals. This should never happen. And you can tell this has happened from the tweet that Nancy Pelosi put out where she said, the president now has the opportunity to prove his innocence. Um, hmm. For somebody who sat in government for so long, it seems like she's pretty brain dead. The whole idea of how the system's supposed to work is you're innocent until proven guilty. The government is supposed to prove that you're guilty and you are deemed to be innocent till then. However, in the leftist, democratic, uh, social, justice, pro social justice warrior progressive world, if you're a conservative and you have wrong think, you're automatically evil and guilty. It's just a, a given. And if you're a leftist social justice warrior, well, you're innocent. So when you're burning down streets and cities, that's okay because you're doing it for the good and you're deemed to be innocent. But when we have something happens where one conservative does something out of line, hey, this is, that's it. These people are evil people and they're just committing the most horrid crimes. So while we may or people may be uh, wanting to turn this into something about Trump or what is his chances of winning or losing or whatever, this is far bigger than Trump. This is about an ideology, a, sh a major shift in a, the nation, the freest nation on earth, which is now showing what a banana republic it's become. We're under the leadership of one party. They have weaponized all apparatus of government to turn against their political rivals. And that, folks, isn't good. Um, hopefully, what will it do? Hopefully, there will be sane people uh, that are progressive or Democrats and that are not far left who will see this for what it is, a witch hunt and a, um, sadly, an erosion of their democratic and free uh, justice system, the, an independent judiciary. So we'll see if that happens. But what I thought was really interesting was the timing that it came out yesterday. Now, the reason I find it interesting is because... To starting today till the end of Sunday, there's some event that you're not supposed to talk about. And it is, the initials would be a T Day of V. That's right. It's, it's affiliated with that. And there's a special group, a, a set group that gets all the attention and all the headlines these days that seems to be really activated and motivated and feeling that they're really an oppressed group when these, um, this group, this transgender group, seems to be getting all the headlines and all the attentions as such a small minority group who seems to um, be calling the shots for the rest of us. And they feel so disenfranchised that they're planning on having a major event happening starting today till the end of Sunday in cities across the U.S. Now, I would suspect now they're encouraging people to come dressed appropriately, um, you know, fashionably garbed. Uh, basically worried that COVID is still there, so to wear masks and to be wearing dark clothing, which obviously supports the Black Brothers, I guess. And you have to think to yourself that if these folks who can never seem to resist committing violence or what we would call violence, but the left would call social justice, and again, don't forget, the leftists believe that anything they do, whether it's burning down buildings or, uh, you know, upturning police cars, it's for the greater good, and that's not committing a crime, we may see some of that. But if that happens, could that get mixed up with potentially people, or could it be painted that these are actually Trump supporters who are doing all of these things? Hmm. Seems kind of odd that two conflicting things would be happening, and there was all of this hype by the press that if, uh, you know, Trump had this happen, uh, he would uh, call out his uh, shock troops and there'd be battles in the streets. So 
I would kind of find it interesting that if some form of violence does occur from today till the end of Sunday because some special interest group is promoting it, does it have anything to do with Trump or will it automatically be aligned that way? The other thing that was uh, interesting that came out was the QAnon shaman, the fellow who had been jailed because he was the one wearing the Viking outfit and the full mask. And as it turns out, he was just a guy who was on basically a guided tour of the Capitol. Uh, this was the uh, poster child of the January 6th insurrection and done all this evil and he was going to be an insurrectionist turning the world upside down. Well, he's been released. Hmm. So again, not much you'd hear about that headline. Now, the other thing I think that's interesting is that earlier in the week, there was this shooting that happened where three children and three adults, children that were like nine years old, got murdered. That's right, murdered by a woman who was confused and thought she was a man. She was a transgender. And as it turns out, this person had all kinds of other issues that were being treated, psychiatric and mental issues. Now, with the announcement of the Trump indictment, well, that seems to kind of have fallen off the headlines, no? So it's interesting how timing works, how coincidentally all these things that are fausted upon us by the left, all these things that they're promoting, all this crazy ideologies, events that show that the people that support their causes and their ideals are freaking nuts seem to get buried because bigger stories suddenly show up. That's the reality of what's happening. And not to mention that recently the NHL came out and it looks like NHL teams are not going to support gay pride nights or anything else. But again, we know that all of these other relevant events that are happening, um, China aligning with Russia, uh, Iran working towards a nuclear weapon, all these headlines will get buried under Trump, 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 Russia, 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 all this stuff to keep people bemused and entertained or looking over or distracted while the real villains, the real culprits, the real, um, I would say, anarchists, insurrectionists of, of uh, freedom are getting away scot-free. Anyway, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Please post any comments you have in the comment section. You can also follow me in my Rumble and my Locals account. Uh, if you have any comments, please share them. I'd welcome them on board and I will see you next time.